Hello, my name is Ayman Apurab. I work for Juniper Networks, Education Service Department. In this learning byte, I will talk about VRF table label. This is an interesting feature which has effect in both control plane and data plane. Although it looks like a small feature in layer 3 VPN, but you will be surprised as some of the stuff won't work unless you have VRF table label configured. For example, egress PE filtering class of service, next generation, multi-cost, and so on. So, what is VRF table label? With VRF table label configured, all the routes in a VRF routing instance are advertised with one label allocated per VRF. This will allow the PE to examine the encapsulated IP header, which means the first lookup is done on the VPN label to determine which VRF instance to refer to, the second lookup is done on the IP header to determine how to filter and forward the packet. In other words, when you configure VRF table label statement, a label switched interface LSI is created and mapped to that VRF, and any routes in the VRF routing table are advertised with the LSI logical interface label allocated for that VRF. Let us explain this starting with a layer 3 VPN control plane. In a layer 3 VPN, the label allocation can be done per next hop, where all layer 3 VPN prefixes that point to a specific next hop, typically a CE device, will get the same label allocated, or per table, where all the layer 3 VPN prefix for this VPN will have the same label allocated or per prefix where every layer 3 VPN prefix gets its own label allocated. In fact, per next hop is a default behavior in Junos. Per table can be configured either using vir uh, virtual tunnel interface, VT interface, or VRF table label. Per prefix can also be configured through a hidden comment. Let us see layer 3 VPN control plane without VRF table label configured. As you can see, prefixes advertised by CE2 as well the PECE link, all of them will eventually have the same VPN label, 299840 in that case. In fact, this label is binded with the next hop, in this case 10.11.0.1 which belongs to CE2. Totally makes sense in most cases, saving label space and it is sim simpler to the PE. But what about this case, where the PE cannot find the next hop as there is nothing advertised from the P CE and the PE-CE link is an Ethernet segment, maybe because the CE is just a host directly connected to the PE. As you can see, we have BGP label allocation failure as it's need a next hop address. By just adding VRF table label, it will work as we will explain later on. What about layer 3 VPN data plane without VRF table label? Where the ingress PE push two labels and the P routers swap the outer label, then the egress PE in this case PE2, will forward the packet only based on the, v the VPN label, as you can see in the MPLS.0 table showing the exit interface and the next hop. Again, totally makes sense in most of the cases. But what happens when you need to inspect the IP header for whatever reason, class of service, next generation multicast, egress PE filtering? you will need to change something in here. By configuring VRF table label under VRF routing instance, as shown in the example, you gonna change many stuff at the same time. From the perspective of control plane, when VRF table label configured, 
VPN label allocation won't rely on the CE next hop. So we won't face the same problem having a BGB label allocation failure as we explained before. Please be aware that the VPN label allocation in case of VRF table label configured is always in this specific range. That's explain why label value in here is 16. What about layer 3 VPN data plane with VRF table label configured? As you can see, the MPLS table referring to another table, for example, for extra lookup in the IB header. In our case, label value 16 referring to a next table. Also shown in here, the LSI interface, which is automatically created once you have VRF table label configured as we explained before. Now, let's see layer 3 VPN configuration with and without VRF table label. In here, I will focus on PE2. As you can see, simple VRF routing instance configured in here without VRF table label and BGP configured between PECE -E as a routing protocol between them. Let us see the route received from the CE. One, two, seven, not sixteen, not four, and five, and six, and seven. Now, let's see the route advertised by this PE, PE two, to the other PE. As you might expect, all the route received from the CE and as well the PECE -E link. What about the label allocation? As you can see, all of the route will have the same VPN label. Here is that well, which can be also seen in the MPLS.0 table. showing a pop action, showing the exit interface and the next hop, which in this case it will be the CE. Now, let's deactivate the BGB protocol under the routing instance to see if the PE will still be able to assign label in this case. We're gonna commit. As you can see, for the BECE link, we are going to have a BGB label allocation failure. Okay, now let's fix this and configure VRF table label. And commit. As you can see, now the label binding is happening and it's not relying on the next hop to allocate the label. Let's activate the BGB under the routing instance back again. And then we commit. As you can see now, maybe the session, the BGP session is not yet up. Yeah, it's still active. This is a BGP session between the CE and the PE. Okay, now it's up and established and receiving four routes. As you can see, here is where examining the routes I'm going to be advertised from this PE to the other PE. Here is a PEC interface and all other routes received from the CE, all of them will have the same 
label which will be not relying on the next hop as we have seen before because we configured VRF table label and then if we check we can see the same information in the MPLS.0 table and now if this PE is going to receive a bucket with MPLS label value of 16 it's going to pop the label and later on doing another lookup in the another routing table in that case it will be vpn-a.inet.0 which will allow a lot of feature to work I think now we understand why a lot of feature in a layer 3 VPN need VRF table label as a prerequisite for it to work either from the control plane or from the data plane Thank you for watching and I hope it was informative for you. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.